Yeah, I began to get the uh, really get the idea about 19, late 1978, early 1979. I was I was called to Washington in a meeting at the Army and Navy Club with some retired uh, admirals and generals. Uh, and, and read the riot act on, a, on an African president that they wanted me to corrupt, and if I couldn't do that, they were going to take him out. And it became very, very clear to me. Up until that point, I'd been an, an economic hitman for about nine years. And you know, like everybody else, I'd heard, I figured that the CIA was involved in the, in the Yende and most of DAC, but it was all intellectual to me. And I would use it sometimes in arguments with these presidents. Oh, remember what happened to most of DAC? Remember what happened to our men? But... You know, I, I, I didn't have any personal involvement, and suddenly I'm in these meetings in Washington with these generals and admirals, and, and I'm hearing this stuff. And then I'm beginning to see the tremendous pressure that rolled those at Ecuador and, and Torrijos of Panama under, and then they get assassinated. And I know there's no denying anymore, and that's when I get the hell out immediately. I quit on a day's notice because it suddenly I really, really got it. And it made me absolutely sick and miserable, and I hated myself and, and had to get out. And then a lot of good old boys say, yeah, we're going around killing people to take over. Now they're doing it in America with NORTHCOM. Now they're taking over. What about government-sponsored terror? You know, we know they've done that many times, uh, the Tonkin incident, the Liberty, and others. 9-11, other events, uh, came out, Cy Hirsch reported, Cheney wanted to attack our own ships, but it got vetoed. Uh, what about government-sponsored terror? I mean, these generals are getting pretty ruthless. Well, look at the general that has just been given command of, of Afghanistan. I guess he hasn't been approved yet, but the one that's been proposed from uh, Special Forces, Special Operations, uh, we, you know, he's, he's, he's on record of having been involved in the torture in these places and also of having uh, given the c command to have uh, people around the world assassinated, what we call terrorists assassinated. I mean, there's no justification for that. You know, Alex, this whole business of terrorism is an interesting word. It's not an ism. There's no relationship between the terrorists in Colombia, the FARC people, and the terrorists at, at Al-Qaeda. They're totally separate. It's anybody that resists the globalist agenda. Stay there. One more segment. MySolarBackup.com. A lot of things can cut off your electrical power. Hurricanes, snow, ice storms. Uh, global warming gremlins can chew off your electrical wires. Uh, a lot of things can happen. And so instead of sending all your money to Al Gore and carbon taxes, I suggest you take uh, the, your own power needs out of the con control of that control freak and go to MySolarBackup.com. Uh, the degenerate control freak, uh, blood-sucking parasites of government the New World Order don't own the sun yet, folks. So make your move now. MySolarBackup.com, the great power source, 1800 800 watts of power on demand, the solar panel, the system, the, the uh, charger, the batteries, all of it. Great little system. Get a bunch of these on your whole house. MySolarBackup.com, 877-327-0365, 877-327-0365. Is that uh, when they are put it in the, on the spot and they are in some particular very big media uh, outlet, they, don't out, they are not always spoken about 911. I don't know why, but they keep for themselves, and they know that the 911 is a, a direct relation with, with our government and our military. And if they have already talked about that clearly and help it to open up the mind of all the people in the United States, which whom I am a citizen, probably the, the, the result will be different. So I don't know why. I still expect to know why the people like him and uh, like others Okay, Solomon, Solomon, I, Solomon, I understand your question. I want to be able to get a response. You know, John Perkins was just talking about government staging events, but I don't ever blame people who politically don't go as far as I do or don't totally agree with me. As long as they're on the side of the good guys exposing corruption, you know, uh, we should focus on the establishment who's totally against us instead of always fighting with each other about who agrees with this or who agrees with that. I don't, I don't know what John's position is on 9-11 being an inside job or not. John Perkins? Well, uh, you know, uh, what I, my, my standard answer to that is I don't have any inside information. And my, my, I write books based on my own personal experience. I like to write about things I know. I know exactly. what happened to Roald Ross of Ecuador. He was assassinated. I know that Torrijos was assassinated. I was there. Now, 9-11, I don't, I don't have any in, inside information. But what I will say, and I always say, is it's in, I, can, I have an extremely difficult time believing that a guy with a walkie-talkie from a cave in the Himalayas executed this by himself. I don't understand why uh, the Pentagon had a hole blown in it and no 
heads roll, no generals lost their jobs, no, no videos ever been produced to show anything. I think it's extremely suspect. Uh, I can't, you know, it's really hard to believe that anything like that happened without inside help. But I can't say that from a position of, of having any personal knowledge. That's why I... I Absolutely. I you choose to go off what you know, and you, and you went to the big military, and, 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 you know, you've named the generals and people in your book, and, and, and you've had a lot of courage. We appreciate you. Let's take another call. Julio, quick question from Illinois. Go ahead. Hey, guys, how are you? Alex, first-time caller. I appreciate your work. I saw the Obama deception. I love it. And, uh, John, thanks for what you're doing. I saw the second zeitgeist. I realize your work and what you have done, and thank you for informing us, the American people, about what you've done. My question to you, John, is what's going on right now in Afghanistan and Iraq and in Iran? Do you think that we have economic hitmen going to Iran going to Afghanistan and trying to bribe them before they bring in the, the jackals, as you mentioned, and our military. And to, All right, we'll know. get that answer on the other side. we got two minutes left with him. He's got another interview coming up. Quick break. Come back with two or three minutes with John Perkins, uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. We'll get his answer on the other side. I mean, I'll go ahead and steal the thunder. <laughs> it's on record. They've got not just money in Iran. They, they're staging terror attacks there publicly. And Iran sits there and takes it. But we'll get John Perkins' take on that on the other side. JohnPerkins.org, Infowars.com. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? Again, get on his free mailing list at uh, JohnPerkins.org to find out the latest when his new book, Hoodwink, is coming out exactly. He says in November... And uh, just really excited to have John Perkins back up with us. Hopefully he'll come back in the next few months because this, this, this economic crisis is so serious. We went to break earlier. I never asked that question uh, or, or, or I never got the answer to it. So in closing, answer the fellow's question about are there economic hitmen in Iraq and Iran? And then uh, the uh, final point uh, is, uh, you know, do we, in, in your opinion, uh, have a chance to beat these people? And first question, lots of economic hitmen and jackals in Iraq, Iran, uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan. I know some of them. I'm e e e email communication with some of them. But assassins and economic hitmen both are doing, their, doing, doing our dirty work over there. Um, and, yes, I think we have an incredibly good chance of, of, of getting rid of this, of turning this whole thing around, Alex. That's, that's what my new book coming out in November is about. And, again, if people go to johnperkins.org, and sign up for my newsletter. I will be announcing the time of that book. The working title is Hoodwinked. And it really gets into this, that I think we are at a threshold in, in human history right now where things are, are in such entropy that we're going to come out of this either under a terrible dictatorship, uh, the, 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 the most global dictatorship ever uh, in our history, or we're going to come out on top, and, and I'm fighting for us coming out on top. And I think we all need to get in there together. We have tremendous power as, as individuals, perhaps more now than ever, because in essence, this new empire is being created through economics, through the way we shop, through the way we live, through the people we watch on television, through the messages we listen to on radio and television. There's a classic struggle going on right so now. So it's insidious that it's not an open military threat. And, and that's a strong suit, but it's also it's Achilles' heel because we have inherent power in the system. So you're saying you believe they are overplaying their hand and we've got a good chance on bringing this dragon down? I think they have overplayed their, their hand. I mean, that's what, you know, that, there's a huge revolution going on in Latin America. Ten countries representing more than 80% of the population of South America have voted in very left-leaning, liberal, progressive, whatever you want to call it, presidents that are saying no to this. And I think in our last election, when we elected Obama, we said no. Whether Obama's going to go along with that or not is another question, but I think that's the symbolism. That's the message that was sent. People are waking up. They woke up big time in Latin America. They're I waking agree with up you. in the mi Middle East. And I think we've woken up here, but we need to keep waking up wider and wider and taking more action and not expect that Obama's going to do it for us. We have to do it. You know, we, we, didn't, we didn't end slavery in this country because Abraham Lincoln found himself in the White House. We pushed and pushed, and we elected a man who we knew was going to end slavery. Women didn't get the right to vote because Woodrow Wilson was for women's suffrage. He wasn't. After he was elected, the women went out on the streets. Everywhere that man went, he was followed by women pickets with huge signs that said, why should we fight for democracy in World War I and in Europe 
when, when half of our own country doesn't have the right to vote. We didn't get out of Vietnam because Richard Nixon was anti-war. He wasn't. We got out of it because the people demanded it. Of course, we were also losing the war, like we are in, in, in the Middle East today. But the people demanded it. We took to the streets. We've got to demand it now. But today it's easier because, in a way, we can demand it. By the way, we shop as much as anything, as you pointed out. We have tremendous control. And for far too long, we've let these people get away with convincing us that what we really want is the cheapest tennis shoes and T-shirts, even though slaves are making them. And, and it destroys our industry. It destroys us. It's a gun that shoots both ways. John Perkins, I'm going to let you go. You've got another interview coming up. We'll talk to you again very, very soon. Thank you so much. The website is johnperkins.org, and uh, the book is Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Uh, John Perkins, the new book, working title, Hoodwink, coming out in November. We'll talk to you soon, sir. Hey, Alex, you're, you're beautiful. Keep up your great work. Thank you. You are too, my friend. Good to, good to have you on. We appreciate your courage. There goes John Perkins. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today.